What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. So this is going to be your finals of the 2015 North American Nationals, Nashville, Tennessee, for the TCG. Uh, this is for all the marbles. Whoever wins this match will be your North American champion. They didn't actually show the top four match. Instead, they showed the um, the consolation match uh, for Worlds, where Jarrell Winston unfortunately lost to Jacob Feeney and uh, a Ritual Beast versus Necros match. I was rooting for Ritual Beast, full disclosure. But uh, it just didn't happen. So, you know, the dream, so close. So Burning Abyss is going to win this event. Uh, who predicted that, guys? I knew, I felt like it wasn't going to be Necros. I, I just had a feeling in my bones that enough people were not going to, were going to just hate on the deck so much that it would be like Necros players couldn't even breathe in their matches. So uh, never in my wildest imagination would I have ever anticipated a BA mirror match. Like... <laughs> You gotta love Burning Abyss, man, because in the most random times, the deck just shows up and does amazing things. So you see Noah opening up with um, double BA. I believe that is a Sir and a Graph. And hits himself a Skarm. I believe he hit a Skarm, actually. No, that, that, that could have been something else. So anyways, uh, his Graph is going to get himself a Skarm on the field. Looks like um, he'll set one. And he does have an effect failure. Okay, excuse me. He did hit a Skarm. I see him adding Tour Guide. Uh, Chase Cunningham's playing that Crush Card Virus. Although I don't really know what he... Like, I don't know what the heck you can hit in a mirror match. Other than, like, Mathematician and Dante. And Dante, like, gives no... F Dante don't give a, a freaking, you know, an, a freaking F word about getting hit by crush card you guys know what word i'm gonna say <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to say that word he also has a solemn warning this looks like a hand that would have been absolutely fantastic to go first having that crush card that breakthrough skill a mathematician uh, i guess maybe he wouldn't have drawn solemn warning but if he would have and maybe not drawn like a double mathematician hand would have been just godly that also seems like a great hand against necros turn one because maybe you don't even summon the mathematician maybe you just set the graph so that you can crush card him so he summons the Mathematician. Unfortunately, it's met with Effect Veiler. You see a Libic milled from the Dante effect. And he may actually think about using that Libic effect. Has one card in his back row. Let's turn the volume up. All right, so he's going to Solemn Warning, making sure the graph just doesn't happen. And that's a hefty that's a hefty cost to pay, man. 2,000 life points just to stop a graph. But that is not going to stop the normal summon of a Rubik. Might he go for Virgil here? No, it looks like he's going for an XC. I thought maybe he might go for Virgil and just try and spin the Mathematician. But with uh, him being able to get himself a Skarm, and looks like he hits a Cert on top of that and... A breakthrough skill, and the crowd's going nuts. He must have hit a Farfa and not... Yeah, excuse me. That, I don't think that was... That may not have been a Sir. It actually may have been a Farfa that he hit. Anyways, Farfa's used on Mathematician. So, pretty much the gates are open for him to get 5,000 damage in. Keep in mind, uh, Chase Cunningham kind of paid 2,000 life points. So, that's an issue because he's only sitting at 6k and this can almost clean him out. It basically means he has no margin for error. That's I, I really hate to have to play a duel like that. Looks like he's stacking some armor on top of those uh, Dantes, putting those downer magicians on top of it. Uh, that obviously eliminates things like uh, Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, which don't really seem like doesn't seem like it would be that good in this matchup anyway. You see him uh, then searching during the end phase for a graph. That was made possible by the Skarm. And play's probably going to go back to Chase Cunningham, who unfortunately has a Mathematician on the field. Oh, excuse me. Why is he at 3,000 life points? Did he not have double Dante attacks? Okay, maybe I miscalculated, but it has him at 3,000 life points. I was thinking that he'd be, in fact, much lower than that. But excuse me, I guess. I, okay, now they are adjusting his life points. I thought that he'd be at 1,000. Guess he's at 2,500 somehow. 
Okay, well, either way. Um, Mathematician is somewhat of a liability here because obviously it stops him from summoning other BAs. In addition, uh, it kind of can... I mean, like, the battle damage is significant when you're that low. So, Noah must have been thinking about using some back row against the Mathematician. Looks like he's just going to let it happen. A Burning Abyss is probably going to be dropped in the graveyard. I would imagine it's Skarm. Try and get yourself a tour guide. Nothing else really makes a ton of sense here. Except Skarm. Unless maybe you're going to send like a Cerberus to the graveyard. But I don't really think that does a lot. Because you, you may literally not even... Like that, that turn that you use the Cerberus. You might end up dying anyway that turn. So... Ah, see they're even talking about... Yeah. Uh, Cerberus, which again, I think it's a legitimate card in Burning Abyss. I would definitely run one at least. I probably would run two of them, but um, it's a good card. I just don't think it fits in this situation here. He is gonna actually dump Cerberus though. Interesting. I, I was thinking that card because I was just like, I don't think any monster. I'm not sure any other any other Burning Abyss really do much here. Like if you're searching for Skarm. That's great and all, but you got to make sure you see next turn. I guess he might try and just kill the monsters, try and make it so that he takes as little damage as possible. The Serpers will accomplish that. Because Noah's not paying, Noah's not summoning any more other, like he's not going to summon any more BAs. That's just not going to happen. Uh, mainly because he has, he has downers on field. Looks like he might ram. All right, so yeah, he is actually going to ram Hoban with a very good analysis there. So he's going after the back row, which is Regeki Break. Oh, actually, no, I believe Regeki Break was, yeah. It looks like Regeki Break may have been used on one of the cards. Let's make sure we know. I'm wondering how both both of them died. Okay, there we go. He's he's crashing both of them. All right. I was like, what what just happened? So he crashed both. Um, Cerberus actually ended up blowing up the Regeki break. Here's the issue with that play. You now don't have a field, and you only have 1,700 light points. Your opponent has game on board. It's cool that you drew. Like it's really cute that you drew a card or drew two cards, but like. Noah Green is not dumb. Like, you don't get into the finals by being dumb here. He's probably just going to be like, attack, attack. Like, I, I'm now making you, I'm going to force you to stop my plays now. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, it doesn't, it, there's no risk involved with what Noah has on board. If the Downer Magician dies, this one right here, he basically just gets another card to replace it. Same thing with this one. I believe he already detached Dante, and now he's adding cards to his hand. So there, there's very minimal risk here. When you have a downer magician with that many materials. So he flipped over a fiend, a fiend griefing. Adding more cards, I believe, from Skarm. Now he's attempting to attack for game. And he's going to call your bluff. See if we can get a fan reaction or crowd reaction. I mean, would I attack in the four back row with downers? Absolutely. If I knew that I only needed one attack. Excuse me. Check that. Two attacks. All right. So he's going to banish. He's going to banish one copy of um, Downer Magician, which... Will trigger the Dante that Noah's uh, gonna send to the graveyard. Looks like he's gonna add a card to his hand. With 200 life points, man. Don't really know if you can come back when your opponent is at 9,000. Um, some matchups, where, some, there are some matchups where life points actually matter. And then there are some parameters where life points just 
matter and advantage doesn't. And anytime you have a deck that can do piercing damage as Burning Abyss can, anytime you have a mirror match, it's going to be relevant. Or you have a deck that can, you know, the extra deck monsters can do, uh, can do burn damage a la Gaga Cowboy or Diamond, uh, not Diamond Dire Wolf, um, Black Ship of Corn. It, things become relevant when you get to under a thousand life points. Uh, if you're playing against like rank five decks, usually rank five decks will run Gaia. So, you know, piercing damage. You always have to think once I get under like 1500 life points, I'm potentially in the danger zone because they can kind of sack me. They can sack me. Um, they can kind of luck sack me out of a win, even if I have more advantage than they do. Life points become like very relevant and card advantage becomes less relevant. So while it's cool that the graph works or the graph is going to give him a monster, he if he takes any attack, he's going to lose. Pretty much any attack right now will kill him. And you have to think uh, there's a chance that Noah could summon Nightmare Shark, although he does have breakthrough skill to stop that. Um, just trying to think if there's any other way he can do any burn damage in Burning Abyss. I don't know if there's any burn cards in that deck, despite the name... And despite the fact that it has the word burn in the in the name, gonna get himself a Skarm. And what will he get from there? I think that uh Yeah man, it's just so little room for error here. Alright, looks like he shows him GG. I believe he was just gonna summon Farfa. Oh, uh, yeah, well, he had Barbar, so that's also a thing. I guess they do totally have a burn card. Yeah, they have Barbar. Um, he could have also used something like, uh, if he would have only had one monster, could have also used something like Farfa. He could have summoned it into the Downer Magician. Farfa would blow itself up, but it would also banish one of your opponent's monsters. And then he'd be free to just attack directly. Um, the fact that one of those attacks got through probably led him to believe that most of those cards that you have face down aren't really that good, so... You could have something like Skill Drain that you can't even use, but could be good. You just you might not have the life points. So we're going to game two. And we could be one short game away from a North American Nationals champion being crowned. Both of these guys are going to Worlds, though. And isn't this just the strangest thing? For the second year in a row at Nationals, we are having a mirror match in the finals. Last year, it was Hat, when nobody expected Hat to really dominate nationals but i think it took like six of the top eight um yeah there was a fire hat version there was regular there was a bunch of regular hats and hat just kind of dominated infernity obviously got like sixth place but this is the second year burning abyss coming kind of out of nowhere those dantes were dropping to like 40 bucks and might actually go back up to like 60 now because apparently the deck can compete with uh necros i thought we learned that at ycs prog but People kind of uh, maybe thought that that was a fluke. So once again, Burning Abyss are in the driver's seat. They will be your 2015 North American Championship winning deck, which, I mean, if I was in Japan, I'd feel a certain type of way about that because we can't, we can't even play the deck. But, you know, that would be like if uh, that'd be like if trains won over there. <laughs> I'd feel the same type of way in the TCG. It's like, come on, we can't even play that deck. You know what I mean? So both players are obviously... Trying to make sure they get a thorough shuffling. Let's see what the commentators are saying. Yeah, I'll give them that. The Burning Abyss mirror is Burning Abyss. Is, there's so much, there's so much floating going on in that deck, man. It's it's really hard to get damage through, and that's why I think you saw when um when he was able to use the the Farfa to banish the Mathematician, and he knew he was going to get a mess load of damage. He was like, I'll immediately take it. I don't care about the Mathematician because it's it, it's so. It's so seldom that you get an open field against Burning Abyss because everything freaking when it goes to the graveyard, either lets your opponent draw or summon something else or lets them search something else. 
You know what I mean? Like there's so many ways to absorb attacks in the Burning Abyss matchup, not to mention the 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 outlet traps, the discard traps that essentially can let you summon by discarding things. If you discard a Sir or a Seer or even a Libic, they can all trigger, which can summon other things. So there's so many ways to, to stop attacks, even if you don't have monsters on the field. You see a special summon from um, from Noah Green. Looks like he's going straight into Dante. Now I just want to see who's gonna have like the maxi. Who's gonna who's gonna have the flying C? Who's gonna have that really huge power play that's gonna swing this game potentially? And Noah Green actually has a maxi in his hand, which is gonna be fantastic to capitalize. I find it a little interesting that he left Regeki in. I don't really think that card is that valuable in the mirror match. Uh, mainly because Burning Abyss don't really have access to ways of stopping their opponent from a... Like, they don't have ways of stopping their opponent's monsters from triggering. They don't have an Abyss Dweller or anything. You see a tour guide as Chase Cunningham's first summon and immediate droppage of a uh, of Maxi. He's like, I'm not letting that ride. I'm going to Maxi you. Now, I think, I think he's going to be forced to exceed here because he has the vanities to back him up and... I just don't think that that play works. Like, Vanities doesn't work if you have a tour guide and a graph on field. Vanities and a Dante, that kind of works. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure he's going to be forced to give his opponent that extra card, which I don't think he'll be happy about. But, I mean, turn advantage says that you already started plus one. You're basically just trading that plus one to get a, a sustainable field. Because a tour guide and a graph is not a sustainable field. Puts the Dante in attack mode. So it looks like he's going to detach. Uh, kind of surprised that he put Dante in attack mode. Because now it totally means if he activates to graph, he'll just... He'll start he'll start giving Noah so many cards that it's like, is it even worth it? Let me just see what's happening. I agree. I, I think that... I think that he's going to activate the graph. I just... I think that this is ludicrous. Um, you're already down a game. I feel like you have to play even better than you did in game one. And I think that this is a risk that probably should not be taken. So he's going to go through that graph. I mean, against just the fact that you're going against two back row, like that's a, that's another reason I don't like this play. If there was no back row, maybe I would, no, no, no. I don't like this play at all because I, I don't understand what you're going for. Like, are you trying to make double Dante? Cause at that point you're giving your opponent like six cards for going for double Dante and you're still fighting through two back rows. So there's a legitimate chance that he might like finish when wind blast you or something and you could lose your Dante because you gave him, you know, 30 cards in his hand. So he attacks over a graph, which just gets a sir. And now it's like, you basically have the same field, but the, the problem is you gave your opponent so many cards. We're going to see an attack of a uh, sir from Dante, which isn't going to accomplish much because now he can just get Graf back and you don't have any more monsters to attack with. Yes, and I, I, I haven't disagreed with any play you've made up to this point. Uh, <laughs> but this I'm certainly doubting, okay. I, I am doubting this one. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the casters don't like the play either. And I just, I don't understand what the play was meant. Like, what was, what was that, what was that supposed to accomplish? He's not going to activate Regeki. Okay, that's, this at least gets rid of the graph. Fair enough. I'll give him this. It doesn't really stop Dante, but it does get rid of the graph. Now, it's going to be on Noah. Like it's, Now it's up to Noah. The burden's on him to kind of respond, finally. What could his back row potentially be? Looks like he's just going to let that ride. Um, he cannot use graph's ability. But he can activate Dante. Looks like he's going to get Libic. Just add that to his hand. <clears throat> okay, showing him that he got Libic. And we see three cards set. Now I'll say this though. If he can, if he does sustain that Vanities, he could technically win off of that. And the maxi play may have been actually worth it. Let's see what he's going to do now. This It all comes down to what Noah's back row are. 
are they legitimate cards? I mean, they, they obviously weren't cards that stop attacks or cards that stop speller traps or anything like that. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure you would have stopped some of those attacks, maybe. We know that, I think Chase has a crush card virus. Now, that, that may have been game one, actually. That's my mistake. Oh, you know what? I think Noah Green has an all-monster hand, which is really bad because he's kind of locked down under his spells. His spell and traps are on the field, and if they're not discard out traps, if they're continuous ones like skill drain, which I don't think I would even keep sided in, honestly. If they're cards he can't immediately use, this could be really bad. It's a fiend griefing. Uh-oh, you know what? I think I think vanities might win him the duel here. Well, no, 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 because he could he could set like he could set a monster if he has a scar. He has a scar in his hand. He could just set it and stall, and uh, Chase Cunningham would be forced to turn off his own vanities. So it looks like he's gonna activate fiend griefing. It's gonna shuffle something back into Chase's deck. Then he's going to send himself a copy of Graph to the graveyard. Might Vanities be played here to stop the Graph from activating? Or might he want him to commit monsters? All right, so he's going to get a Skarm, which means he kind of missed his opportunity for the Vanities, at least. That was a smart summon, too, of Noah, because assuming he can't summon or something else like that, at least he has a really strong defensive monster that can get him to a tour guide if it dies. All right, what's the normal summon going to be? Here's probably the Vanities. No, nah, if he flips over Vanities now, Noah could just crash the Sirs. That would turn off the Vanities, and it would stop both players from searching, which he might consider a win for himself. Is that what's going to happen here? If I was Chase, I think I'd flip the Vanities over. All right, so he does flip over that Vanities. Let's see what the cast would say about that. Oh, Lord. He flipped over Fire Lake and House is cleaned. He flips over Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, the final card, and everything is cleaned. And that is nuts. That card has not been power creeped, apparently. Looks like he wanted to wait until the... Yeah, it looks like he wanted to wait until the absolute last second to use that Fire Lake, but... He actually takes out Chase Cunningham's Fire Lake, which there would have been no reason for him to activate it. So now here's the great thing, though. Noah can actually special summon all of those monsters in his hand. He has like a bajillion monsters in his hand, and now he can actually use them. Now, getting damage through is still going to be really difficult. That's why I hate this mirror match. It's not like Cleaford or Teller Knights where you, you can do damage really, really quickly. This matchup, it is very difficult. If there was a rank three abyss dweller, that'd be like way better. <laughs> they, they need uh, some type of mirror, some type of card for the mirror match, man. Other than Max C, which doesn't really solve the problem that everything floats in the mirror match. We'll see an Xe here. Goes for his own Dante in defense mode. Goes for Downer Magician. I guess that's one way of getting damage too. Just using Downer's, uh, using their the Downer Magician's effect to um do piercing damage that's one good way of i guess doing some damage it does cut off your ability to special summon burning abyss or really to have any burning abyss on the field except dante and virgil and the monsters from the extra deck looks like he's just gonna pass turn looks like he had a sir All right, well, I guess you can summon BAs if you're using Torgad because the effects are negated. Or you could pretty much throw Libic in that situation. Libic in that um that category as well. So Noah Green has a lot of cards. Um, neither player having pretty much any defensive cards. So this game is going to get as offensive as a Burning Abyss Mirror match can get anyways, which really ain't even that offensive. Now, if either player could throw down like a Dark Law, okay, maybe we'd be talking. Then shit would start getting, uh, it, stuff would start getting banished. And, uh, I'm gonna assume that Chase Cunningham just wanted to look at those materials to see if I kill that, um, that Downer Magician, 
what is going to be under it? Why does that judge have so many damn rings on his hand? Dude, we get it. Why do you have six rings on your hand? Seriously. I don't care where that, I don't care what the style is, wherever that is. That's not cool. Okay, could go for Virgil here. Nope, going to go for another XC. Maybe you just try and go Acid Golem. Nope. Once again, it's main man Dante. It's going to mill three, hits a graph, Serperus, and what was that last card? Don't recognize that one. Looks like he's going to summon that Skarm. That's a good point. I guess if he didn't go through Max C, Fire Lake, Fire Lake just would have just, yeah, Fire Lake probably would have just killed him. All he would have had was a graft and that would have been it. So it looks like Dante's attempting to butt heads. All right, so he'll take damage. That's what I thought. I thought I thought Dino Magician had way too many materials on it for Dante to take it out. I'm kind of wondering about that. Maybe he's trying to get his own Fire Lake back, and that is what he wants to do. He just wants to get his own Fire Lake back to make sure that uh, Noah can't really commit to any plays. He does take damage for it, but not really sure that the damage matters when it's 8,000 to 7,800. Now, it will be kind of difficult to play around fire lake although technically he could just attack skarm uh and that would pretty much cancel out the fire lake i'm wondering about that oh wow drawing the galaxy cyclone and that was an absolutely nutty draw because again Noah has the tour guide in his hand, and now Chase is going to be basically forced to use the. He'll, it's kind of like use it or lose it. You know, I don't think it's a great situation if he uses it or not. I don't even think I would use it honestly. Yeah, he's he's not going to chain Fire Lake. I, I don't think that using it would be the right play there. Uh, the issue is Noah can just follow up with a tour guide. That was a hell of a draw because. If you look at Noah's hand, it's it's nothing but monsters. So to draw the the instant spell and trap destruction that you need just seems really really good. Now he may want to hold on to that tour guide until he knows that he can win, but um, it did kind of cancel out that whole Dante play that Chase Cunningham did. And it looks like Fire Lick is kind of becoming possibly the defining factor in this matchup. You know who can resolve one and who can't resolve one. So it looks like he's content with um downward magician attacking over okay looks like oh he might even get gotcha 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 okay so downward magician is going to attack over skarm that's going to do a little damage then he's going to banish his own downward magician use graph to get rubik now he's going to go for virgil this is a really nice play all right so he's going to pitch spin dante Oh, no, he's going for the Skarm search. He's not actually going to spend the Dante. He's going for the Skarm. The Skarm's no longer in the graveyard. Interesting. That's a Yeah, that's actually a better play because then he doesn't get Tour Guide. And now he gets his Downer Magician back in the end phase, and he gets a new Downer Magician with a Virgil, and we know that he cannot get over any monsters on the field. That was a brilliant play. Oh, my goodness. I think I just messed up. Hold on. Let's see if we can go back. I got two ahead of myself. Let's unpause this. There we go. Yeah, I was actually trying to adjust the volume, but that was a brilliant play. I mean, that, that's a play that completely went over my head. I didn't even think about that. And he still has so many resources. Like, he still has the tour guide. Noah Green still has the tour guide in his hand. So he still really hasn't committed his most powerful card. And the Dante cannot get over anything. Chase, Cunningham, Don, Chase Cunningham's Dante can't get over anything on the field at all. Even if he puts a downer magician on top of it, 
I'm fairly certain that uh, Noah Green will just try and spin it and win through battle damage. Let's see what happens here. But I'm I'm fairly certain he's just gonna ignore the Dante. Well, I think he may have a Cerberus though. He does have the Cerberus. Oh, he he spun the he spun the Cerberus. <laughs> he spun the Cerberus instead. Okay. He might just try and crash and summon the tour guide and try and win that way through a a, a downer. Oh, what's it called? An, an acid golem. And it looks like that was what's going to happen. Um, he had a downer magician in attack mode. Unfortunately, uh, all he needed to do was simply crash downer magician or summon first tour guide and then just crash. I don't even think he had to crash, honestly. He could just run it over with um, acid golem. And I don't think that there was anything that Chase Cunningham could do. So this was a well-played match by two excellent competitors. And I hope you guys enjoyed this match. Burning Abyss is your 2015 North American WCQ champion. Shout outs to Sean, or excuse me, to Noah Green. I mean, this must have been a hell of a feat playing against so many Necros, so many Ritual Beasts, so many Cleaf Fort, and even beating the Mirror Match as well.